Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I'm Ken Kitts, president of the University of North Alabama. And on behalf of the Board of Trustees and the faculty and staff of UNA, I welcome you to our fall commencement ceremony honoring bachelor's degree graduates of the College of Business and Technology. And on a personal note, I would like to thank you for your patience and understanding with the rescheduling we had to do with today's ceremonies due to the severe weather that moved through the area early this morning. Please rise as we bow our heads for a moment of silence and give thanks for our many blessings this year and for these special graduates here today. Amen. And please remain standing for the national anthem. This ceremony represents a very special time for each graduate and his or her family and friends. To maintain the dignity of this distinctive occasion and out of respect for all of our graduates, we ask that you please silence cell phones and remain seated until the ceremony is ended so that each graduate's name can be heard when announced. Now, commencement is a celebration of academic attainment and to bring greetings to you from the academic community of the University of North Alabama it is my pleasure to introduce you to our Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Ross Alexander. Thank you, President Kitts, and thank you for everything you do for UNA and our fine students. Congratulations, graduates. I too welcome and thank you for attending this ceremony. The faculty, staff, and I commend and applaud your momentous accomplishment. Graduates, in earning your baccalaureate degree, you join an elite group as only roughly one third of all Americans possess a bachelor's degree. Perhaps more importantly, as the overwhelming majority of you are from Alabama and will forge careers in Alabama, only roughly one quarter of Alabamians possess a baccalaureate degree. Therefore, you are all very well positioned to excel in the workforce both now and in the future because of your UNA degree. I would argue, in fact, that in attaining your UNA degree, you are better prepared than those who have graduated from other universities in the state. At UNA, you have been educated, trained, and credentialed to immediately enter the workforce to fulfill in-demand, vital, and high-paying jobs across a number of fields and sectors. With its emphasis on applied learning, problem solving, cultural competence, quantitative reasoning, and work-based skills, your UNA education will serve as a career catalyst and accelerator. Importantly, your education, experience, and degree has prepared you to deal with change, challenges, and an ever-evolving economic marketplace. Recent trends and data indicate that most of you will have four or five different jobs before you turn before you turn 30 and several different careers during your working life. 
Your UNA degree will empower you to excel in this environment of constant change. Finally, I would be remiss if I did not tell you that we want you back as graduate students. At the appropriate time, please discover and enroll in one of our affordable, flexible, and primarily online graduate degrees that can further facilitate your career success. Thank you, congratulations, and Roar Lions. Thank you, Provost Alexander. I want to introduce now several people who are celebrating this special occasion with you and ask that these individuals stand when their names are called. Please hold your applause until all have been introduced. On stage with me are Dr. Greg Carnes, Dean of the College of Business and Technology, Dr. Vince Bruton, Dean of the Cole Honors College, Ms. Susan Adams, President of the UNA Alumni Association, Mr. Ron Patterson, Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Dr. Ross Alexander, Provost and Executive Vice President for Academic Affairs. Ms. Ann Berry, our guest speaker, who will be formally introduced in a few moments. And Dr. Jason Watson, President of the UNA Faculty Senate. And I would note that Dr. Watson is joined today by several of his faculty colleagues representing the College of Business and Technology. Please join me in welcoming the platform party and our faculty representatives as well. I also want to recognize and thank Dr. Lloyd Jones, the UNA Jazz Band, and student vocalist Dylan Haynes for providing the amazing music for these ceremonies. This group has been with us through five total ceremonies, two last night and three today. Please join me in thanking them. Thank and now to our guest speaker. You've likely seen many references to our celebration this year of the 150th anniversary of the admittance of women. In 1872, our university, then known by its predecessor name as the State Normal School of Florence, became the first state-supported co-educational institution south of the Ohio River and the oldest co-ed teachers college in the country. To mark this significant point in our history, UNA proudly declares the 2001 2021-22 uh, academic year as the year of the UNA woman. Our guest speaker today is a shining example of the countless number of female graduates who have made names for themselves with accomplished careers. Graduates, Sinceria Ann Berry was one of you in the UNA class of 1978. She completed her bachelor's degree and was looking forward to what life had in store for her. Just one year later, she began working in the United States Senate for then Alabama Senator Howell Heflin from nearby Tuscumbia. As noted in her bio on page 30 of your program, she has now served the American people for over 40 years in various positions in the Senate. In March of this year, Ms. Berry became the eighth woman to hold the office of Secretary of the U.S. Senate, and of particular historical note, she became the first African American to be selected for this position. She is responsible for running the day-to-day -day operations of the Senate, serves as its chief financial officer, and oversees a staff of more than 200. It's easy to see why Ms. Berry was chosen this fall for the Lifetime Achievement Award when our list of homecoming award winners was announced. She's indeed a most fitting recipient of that recognition, and we thank her for her many years of public service. Please join me in giving a warm University of North Alabama, welcome. A welcome back home to one of our own, Miss Ann Berry. And Dr. Kitt, thank you for that wonderful introduction. And let me begin by congratulating the class of 2021 for sticking with it, overcoming unprecedented challenges and graduating with a well-earned degree in resilience in addition to what you majored in. College graduations is always a remarkable achievement, but nobody has ever been through what you've been through to get here. And you can wear the experience and this hard-won success like a badge of honor for the rest of your life. Congratulations to support your ambitions, and I think they deserve their own round of applause. So thank you. I graduated 
from the University of North Alabama with a degree in secondary education in 1978. As it happened, I didn't spend a minute of my career in secondary education. Life had other things in store for me. And because of those completely unexpected things, earlier this year, this fine university honored me with this Lifetime Achievement Award. They said it was because I was an African American, ever to, first African American ever to serve as Secretary of the Senate, the Chief Administrator, Legislative and Financial Officer of the world's greatest deliberative body. Or they may have just been looking for someone who graduated a really long time ago. Either way, it was very special to me because it was this university that set me on a path of life I would never have dreamed of before coming here. Before UNA, my ambition was to get a good job. I was a pretty good typist, and I was hoping for a career in being an office secretary. I was poor. I wanted to work and make money and have security for myself and my family. But after high school, I found work at home insurance company in Homewood. They call it a gap year now, but when you take, you know, when you take a year between high school and college to figure out yourself, for me, it wasn't anything so fancy. It was a year of making a living. But it was also when I first learned about the University of North Alabama. And the more I learned about it, the better I knew that it was the place for me. UNA was not only the state's oldest public university, with a heritage of training some of Alabama's finest teachers. In an era when it was still quite unusual for women to go to college, UNA had already opened its doors to women for 100 years. And this year, UNA proudly celebrates its 150th anniversary of co-education with the Year of the UNA Woman. I was also impressed by the academic rigors built into the tradition of UNA. In its days as Florence Wesleyan University, prospective students had to demonstrate an ability to translate four books of Caesar's Gaelic Wars from the original Latin and six books of Virgil from the original Greek into English. I think all of us feel very fortunate that those particular skills are no longer required for admissions to the University of North Alabama. I know I did, and yet I quickly discovered that this university's academic standards remained commendably high, and so were its standards of conduct and ethics. It was also a community where people cared for about each other, helped each other, encouraged each other, and nurtured each other. The course of my life was changed in just that way. After graduation, when I couldn't find a job teaching, I took a secretary job in the engineering department at South Central Bell. But a year later, in 1979, I was contacted by the office of Alabama's newly elected United States Senator, Hal Heflin, about a position in the Senator's Washington office. I didn't know Senator Heflin or how his office had found me, but I learned later that Dr. Robert DeLott, the president of UNA at the time, served, and I had served with him as a student aide in the admissions office, had recommended me to the Senator. And I was off to Washington, D.C., a city I had never seen, but for what Dr. Gallat accordingly called the opportunity of a lifetime. That was 42 years ago, and in the decades since, I have been proud to work not only for Senator Heflin, but later for five other United States Senators in positions of increasing responsibility. I was thinking seriously of retiring earlier this year when I was offered the position of Secretary of the Senate a position for which I was nominated by the Majority Leader Chuck Schumer of New York, and to which I was elected 
by the full membership of the United States Senate. Today, I manage the Senate as an institution, supervising 26 departments, nearly 240 employees, and a $25 million budget. My team and I are responsible for everything from recording each day's Senate debates to running the Senate gift shop, the parliamentarian of the Senate, the Senate historian, the Office of Interparliamentarian Services, and the people who pay 100 senators and thousands of staff people report to me. And I am proud to be the first African American and the eighth woman in the 232 year history of the Senate to hold this office. But what I found most compelling about being called to this assignment was another historic opportunity that had nothing to do with being black or being a woman or being a pioneer of any kind. It was an opportunity to support, lead and nurture a remarkable group of people who protected our democracy during the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. When the rioters tried to disrupt the ratification of the Electoral College ballots, the people I work with secured those ballots until the crisis had passed. When the rioters roamed through the Capitol building, threatening harm to anyone they encountered, the people I work with barricaded themselves in their offices and kept working. When the rioters put democracy itself in danger on that infamous day, the people I work with waited them out and certified the same peaceful transfer of power that had been the hallmark of our government for more than 200 years. The people I work with are the ultimate public servants. They are the unsung heroes of our republic, drawn not to fame and glory, but to the quiet, professional, essential mission of supporting our institutions of government, one good days, on good days, and really bad ones alike. And being their leader, not the fancy title, or the big office in the Capitol, or the pioneering path I took, is the greatest honor of my life. I would never have dreamed when I was a student here that my life's journey would lead me to this calling. The fact that it came four decades on Capitol Hill when retirement was beckoning me only makes it more remarkable, more deeply personal and satisfying. As you sit here contemplating your own futures, I would simply encourage you to focus not so much on a specific destination as on the journey itself. I didn't become an educator, though it was a dream of my youth. I did things I never dared to dream. I saved the best for last. And I have learned that the journey, with all its twists and turns, peaks and valleys, sunshine and shadow is what life is really all about. The journey is the choices you make, large and small, so make good ones. It's the people you encounter, famous and familiar, heroes and villains alike. So be kind to people and be the kind of person you want others to be. It's the preparations you make not least those you have made these last four years right here at the University of North Alabama. It's the risk you take, like leaving the security of my family for an adventure in the nation's capital. And it's the understandings you gain slowly over the years of what's important and what's not, what's lasting and what's fleeting, who you are and who you're supposed to do in your life, lifetime here on this earth. Philosophers tell us that, quote, life must be lived forward, but can only be understood backwards. That's exactly the way I took my life 
now and understand my purpose, improbable as it was when I sat where you sit today so many years ago. As you begin your own adventures in this wide world, I urge you to heed these simple but profound words of Ernest Hemingway. Quote, it is good to have an end to journeys toward, but it's the journey that matters in the end. So, congratulations, good luck, and enjoy your journey. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Berry, for those wonderful remarks. It's been great to have you with us for these ceremonies. It is my pleasure to again introduce the UNA Jazz Band and Mr. Dylan Haynes for a musical selection. The Keller Key Award was established as a memorial to the late President James Albert and Mrs. Mara Glenn Keller. A Keller Key is presented at each commencement to the honor graduates who, on the basis of having earned all credits for the bachelor's degree at this university, have made the highest scholastic average. Will the following recipient of the Keller Key for this ceremony please proceed to the stage to my right? Lori E. Bowers. <laughs> Ms. Bowers completes the Bachelor of Business Administration degree with a major in accounting. 
For this semester, qualifying for the Keller Award meant having a grade point average of at least 4.0 on a scale of 4.0. Please join me in congratulating Ms. Bowers. Dean of the College of Business and Technology will now present candidates for the conferral of bachelor's degrees. Would Dr. Greg Carnes please come forward? As you are able, would candidates for bachelor's degrees in the College of Business and Technology please stand and remain standing? President Kitts, it, was with, it is with great pleasure that I present these candidates to you for the conferral of their bachelor's degrees. Through the power vested in me by the Board of Trustees for the University of North Alabama, I now bestow upon each of you your respective bachelor's degree. Please move the tassel from the right edge to the left edge of your cap. Congratulations. May be seated. Graduates, you are all now alumni of the University of North Alabama, and in that regard, UNA Alumni Association President Susan Adams will now come to the podium to extend greetings. Good afternoon, fellow graduates. I'm Susan Adams president of the National Alumni Association here at UNA, and I would like to congratulate you on reaching this great milestone in your life. As you walk across the stage this afternoon, just remember that learning does not stop here. It does not stop today. And neither should your connection to the University of North Alabama. The University of North Alabama will continue to be a resource for you, not only through your career, but throughout your lifetime. By utilizing the UNA network of over 70,000 alumni, you will be connected with people and places from all over the world. Please let those connections work for you. As my parents told me when I started my journey at UNA, please take advantage of every opportunity to learn something new, and I still heed that advice today. As you graduate, your first job may not be your dream job but you'll learn something new that you can take with you to that next opportunity. As an alumni association, we're very proud of your accomplishments and we can't wait to see what your future holds. Always remember that the National Alumni Association will go with you wherever you go. Please keep us informed as to your progress and your different achievements throughout the years and let us know through the UNA Office of Alumni Relations. We look forward to starting this ne next chapter with you, and we cannot wait to see you again at upcoming alumni social gatherings, athletic sporting events, homecoming, and so much more. Best wishes, class of 2021, and Roar Lions. <clears throat> graduates. Most of the uh, preliminaries are now out of the way. We've had our time on stage and now it's time that we invite you here individually to be recognized for the hard work that has brought you here this afternoon. And with that in mind, I will ask the marshals to please begin conducting the candidates to the platform. Deja Marshall Coleman, Cole Honors College. Thomas Carroll Barnett. Elizabeth Ann Rice. Molly Elizabeth Hayes. Ian 
Alexander Green. Nathaniel Mack Reed. David Thomas Cozart II. Banglin's son, summa cum laude. Tyler Shane Pendergrass. Nicholas Sean Terry, magna cum laude. Gatlin Bray Jones. Zapheth Tyler Cunningham. Joseph Trevor Shelton. Lori Elizabeth Bowers, summa cum laude. Natalie Lane Thornton, summa cum laude. Jacob Alexander Gentle. Nathan Michael Thompson. Cameron Marcus Watson. Isabella Rose Vaden, magna cum laude, Cole Honors College. Marguerite Lee King Terrell. Anna Marie Mason. Sierra Nicole Pilkington. Tyler Ray Black. Alyssa Ruth Gordon. Noah Marshall Cothran, summa cum laude. <laughs> Benjamin Scott Beavis. Jonathan Brooks Hughes. <laughs> Thea Marie Doria, cum laude. David Lee Wiles, Jr., summa cum laude. Shelby Marie Greenhill. Amelia Baena. Samantha Marie Nosita. Montana Grace Word, cum laude. <laughs> Kayla Sierra Fletcher. <laughs> Hannah Michelle Watson, magna cum laude. Carly Annette Dempsey. Scarlett Alexis Lee McMurtry. Jerry Bailey Perrin, Perrin, magna cum laude. Leslie Nicole Haynes, magna cum laude. Miriam Taylor Smith. Kirsty LaHaven Williams. Brandon Robert Rutherford. Theron Marshall Lee. Madison Rayanne Parks. Gavin Scott Honeycutt.
Trevor Sean Blackman. Mary Ashley Edelman, cum laude. Nicholas Bradley Jarrett. Layton Russell Packwood. Haley Beth Davis, magna cum laude. Isaiah K. Chandler. Kana Cheyenne Young. Jalen Kenyon Jones. Michael Trey Smith. John Aloysius Riley. Shalandria Janice Cosby. Isaac Peterson. Kale, Kale Channing Cress, cum laude. Haley Moses. Adrian Samaria Williams. Jada Antigua Smith. Cecilia Tompkins. Gregory Jackson. Trevor Lee Michael. John Martin Wagner, cum laude. Trey Alexander Washington. Gregory Chase Harrison. Kaylin Amanda Savini, magna cum laude. Sydney Jade Keaton. Ashley Marguerite Moore, Cole Honors College. Jackson Lee Turner, magna cum laude. Christian Robert Kirk, magna cum laude. Emma Brooke Baggett. Mallory Brooke Reeves. Sarah Mason Rogers, summa cum laude. William Melvin Cottingham. Madison Brooke Kilpatrick, magna cum laude. Caitlin Ann Prisbiz, cum laude. Riley Blake Calvert, summa cum laude. Anna Grace Wilson, cum laude. George Parker Burnham. Noah Brenton Motes.
guys have been a lot of fun. We like that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join with me as we honor all these graduates with a well-deserved round of applause. <laughs> graduates, stand up and thank these people who have loved you, encouraged you, supported you. Thank you. If you'd be seated for just a few more minutes as we wrap up the ceremony. Graduates, truly we commend you for your hard work, the personal sacrifices, the perseverance that have led you to the platform today. I want you to know this. We're proud of you. We're very, very proud of you, as are your families and friends. And as you leave this university to go make your mark in the world, I have but one request. Take UNA with you wherever you go. Wherever you go, carry this wonderful, beautiful, historic university carried in your heart and when you run into those fellow alumni do so with a hearty roar lions and know that we send our very best wish you, wishes with you. I would like to thank Dr. Ross Alexander, Mr. Ron Patterson, Dr. Greg Carnes, and Dr. Jeffrey Bibby for their assistance with today's program and we thank each of you in the audience for joining us to celebrate these graduates. If everyone would please rise now for the playing of the alma mater. Thank you. 